Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. So welcome to another edition of the Click Design blog. I've actually created a application that will showcase a couple of features with ClickSense. Not only will it be educational, but it will also be entertaining. Now, if you guys have followed me for some time, you know my love for Star Wars, and I always create an example here and there, utilizing characters or the like. In this example, I've actually found something very interesting to demonstrate the REST connector that comes with ClickSense. And keep in mind, whatever I do in this video will also apply to ClickView as well. And I was trying to create something that would be fun, but at the same time, relatively simple kind of like the hello world of the rest connector for ClickSense. And I was looking at Twitter examples, uh, Facebook examples, and I got a number of them to work, but there was a number of prerequisites up front that some of the newbies might not know how to set up or might not invest the time in setting up, like setting up OAuth for security and authentication or getting an access token or an API key. And I didn't really want to go through all of that. So through my search for a simple REST service, I happened to stumble across something called the Star Wars API, which was fitting for my love of Star Wars and something that I wanted to demonstrate to you guys today. And the URL is available right here, and I'll provide it wherever this video is posted, either in YouTube and the Click community, along with the samples and so forth. But the goal of this video is to show you how to use the REST connector uh, and also some of the features, and then also show you how you can link the various members and objects that come back from the response from the REST call. Now, keep in mind, I am not a hardcore developer or programmer uh, like a number of the click devs that are out there. Um, I know enough to be dangerous. Uh, I can consider myself a cut and paste programmer. And I know there's a lot of you out there that want to get started quickly, want to get the basic concepts down, and then want to apply this to something greater. And that's what this video is intended to do. Okay, so let's get started just looking at the RESTful API that comes uh, with the Star Wars uh, API site they have here. So when you go here, there's a menu home about documentation, and then they start giving you a way to just test it, right? So you have a resource. In this case, it's called people. Um, you have the URL of the RESTful service. You click request, and it spits back a response. And this is in a JSON format, and this is basically what's known as a JSON schema that will help identify the fields and the values. And what we're going to do is feed this into ClickSense and then basically gather that information for uh, analysis. So just to give you a quick example of what this app looks like, it just pulls back, actually, if you think about it this way, two tables from two RESTful calls, one that gets all of the people from the Star Wars universe, and then the species of those people, and then different character attributes like hair color, skin color, height, weight, uh, et cetera. And I've also used a extension called a media box to just pass information to the Bing search engine for images. So you can kind of see what that character looks like. So for example, if I'm interested in looking at all humans, there's 35 humans. I have all their attributes here. And if I wanted to choose a particular human, in this case, let's say Luke Skywalker, it passes that value over to the Bing search engine. And then you can see the associative experience with green, white, and shades of gray, showing you the hair color, the gender, etc. So we're going to build this app. Okay, so that's what the app's going to look like. Now, if we go back to the RESTful service and we go into uh, documentation, this is where you'll see stuff about the resources and the endpoints. And again, I'm not going to use all of the proper terminology because, like I mentioned, I am not a hardcore uh, developer when it comes to using RESTful services. You have your um, resources and then you have various parameters that go with those resources. So for example, we're going to use people and we're going to use species. Okay. Another thing, if you go to the about area, it will give you your statistics of what's in that current database. There's currently 87 people and currently 37 species. And my numbers have checked out to that, which is also comforting to know that what I've done worked properly. Okay. So to get back, we are going to use the people resource. And you can see here's where the people resource lies. And here's the response that comes back from it. So all I'm going to do is really just copy this resource right here with the HTTP. And I'm going to go to ClickSense. And I already have a new app created. So I'm going to click uh, Add Data. 
and I'm going to select from the various connectors here. I'm going to select the RESTful connector, and then I'm going to paste in that URL. Okay, pretty much that's all we need to do. Uh, the method is going to be get. We're going to set a timeout. So please understand certain RESTful services will only allow so much data to come back and so many requests within a certain time period. And they do that usually by IP address, and they might block you. I tried doing this with a few other prior to this Star Wars API, and I got locked out after like 10 tries. So um, so please be mindful, whatever services that you're going to use, um, you fit within those limits. So the Star Wars REST API, I think, allows 10,000 calls a day, which is more than enough for uh, what we're going to do. Okay. So let's talk about the REST connector interface. So here's where you put the URL of the RESTful service, okay? And here's your resource people. The method is get, we're going to be retrieving data in a response, and then there's post as well. I haven't experimented with post just yet, but I would imagine you can take data. And for example, with other tools in the past, I've been able to post, let's say, Facebook or Twitter or something through an app. Now, the auto detect response type, it's going to detect if like CSV or XML or JSON comes back. By default, usually JSON comes back, so it's going to come back in a JSON format. The sequence ID, this is how it understands the nested parent-child relationships that come back within the JSON schema response. Um, current record, sequence ID, fully qualified record, these either use um, individual numbers or hash keys to represent, I guess you can say, linkages between the different members that come back within the response. To keep things simple, we're just going to use a sequence ID. Again, I'm not messing with authentication. So please refer to the documentation um, and understand that if you're going to use, let's say, an API key or an access token, you would put them in the, either the query header or the query parameter, like I had to do with, say, with Facebook and um, uh, Twitter and so forth. Um, pagination. Okay, I'm going to get back to this in a second. So pagination is a great example of when data comes back, for example in more than 10 rows, let's say. I think if you don't use pagination, some services will uh, limit the number of results that come back. So a lot of people who are not familiar with this will say, well, I'm only getting 10 rows back, or I'm only getting 100 rows back, because that's what the service limits to. When you use pagination, you can set up a path where it can get the next page. Either it'll submit another call and pull back the next set of rows, and you have to define that. And that's not something that you know, newbies would know how to set up right away. I myself had to play with this a little bit to understand it, but you also need to understand how this, the response comes back in the paths of the nodes and if it's using what's called offsets and limits, etc. So for example, you can see we have offset, next page, next token, next URL. Uh, a very simple one to use would be next URL. Facebook uses that and um, so does the Star Wars API, but I'm going to leave that blank just to show you what happens. And then we're just going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this uh, star wars rest people okay now remember we did this through the data wizard okay and then once we load this i'm going to show you how we can do it through the data load editor as well okay so notice that our parent root response has come back okay sometimes there's valuable information in the http header response you might want to include that in whatever you're doing you might need to include that it's available if you need it. I'm not going to play with that right now. Um, if I click on root, you can see here's the root values that come back in the top area of the schema. There's 87 records. There's that next URL I mentioned. This is important to use for pagination because we're going to use this field and this root as part of the path. Uh, previous and key root, we really don't need to be concerned with those. But we don't need to include those as attributes in our data. Now, if we expand the results, the results member that comes back is where we want all of this data. This is the data that comes back with the, you know, Luke Skywalker, C3PO. These are the names of the characters and all the attributes. Okay, so that's the data we want. Now, these are other related nodes of this schema. Films, species, vehicles, starships. We're going to come back to that in a little bit, but just to keep things simple, we're just going to uncheck all of those. And just for those watching this video, this is going to be a lot longer than my other videos. This is going to be educational as well. It's going to also include a lot of tidbits to, to really see how this stuff works. Okay, so we're going back to just the results. And right now, let's just say all I want is all the character names. Keep it simple. Okay, load data and finish. Edit the sheet. 
and let's just grab a KPI object and let's just say give me a count of all the names. So there's only 10 names. Now, if you recall, there's 87 characters in this database, but it only returned 10. That's because we did not set up pagination. So if we go back into the data manager, in this case, what I'm going to do is go into the data load editor so you can kind of see what's happening under the covers. Okay, it creates an auto-generated scripting section that's there. Okay, well, we need to edit this connection. So I'm going to unlock this and then I'm going to edit the connector. And we're going to go back in and we're going to set up pagination type as next URL. And then we're going to put in the next URL field path. This basically represents traversing the schema, such as the top level node is root. And then if you remember, there was a member value called next. Okay. And I do apologize for some of those experts out there if I'm not using all the terminology correctly. So that is what I showed you earlier within that path when we were selecting the fields. Okay. So I'm just going to save this. Click load data. And now you can see 87 lines were fetched. And if we go back, our count is 87. Okay, so that's just a little tip on how pagination works. Now, like I said, different pagination types work differently. I don't have all of them. Maybe in the future I'll, I'll create ClickSense in 60 videos or something just showing a different pagination type. Okay, so we have 87 characters in here, but we're going to delete this because we're going to start over when we start building this app. Okay. So to start over, all I do here is I'm just deleting that load script and we're going to start creating a data model that looks like this. So let me go back into my other app. Okay. And basically we're going to get data from the Star Wars REST API. It's going to use the REST connector. We're going to create a data model that's going to link the different parts of a schema from two different resources, one people and one species. And then we're going to create a very simple app. Okay. So we got to create another connector um, to the species resource. So what we're going to do here is just create a new connection. And now you can see from the list, I can choose the click rest connector and it brings the same dialogue as well. So now I'm going to go back to the Star Wars API and I'm going to look for species and there's species. Okay. Now you could add other types of parameters and endpoints and stuff like that. I'm not messing with all that. I'm just keeping the simple endpoint like that. Okay. Now the same concept here, pagination type, next URL root next. Okay. We can click test. We're successful. Make sure I got everything correct. And then we got to give it a name and we'll call this one Star Wars rest species. Okay. Click create. So now we have that. So now we have those two connection types. Now linking JSON schemas together is not for the faint of heart because if you don't understand the structure or the layout or the basics of primary and foreign keys, it could be a little daunting. Okay. I'm not going to talk all of that database terminology. I'm going to talk in more layman's terms just to show you how I kind of link the different nodes together to get that data model structure that I showed you here. Okay. So let's kind of traverse that to show you how that works. So we're going to start out with the Star Wars REST connector for the people resource. So we're going to click select data. Okay. We have our top level root. We have our results. Okay. And then we have the various nodes underneath here or members underneath here. So we want the main results as I mentioned. Okay. And then I'm going to uncheck films and vehicles and starships because I have no interest in that. Now, when we go back to results, there's another thing you need to know about is that it always returns similar information and values and attributes using similar names. So such as name, right? And you don't want, when you load that data into ClickSense, you don't want to either link on that name or you don't want to associate in that name. So you have to give it an, a unique identifier. So this is going to be called people name. Okay. Now let's see what other attributes we want to keep here. Pretty much all of that. I don't want home world. I'm not interested in created and edited. Um, now these are interesting. Okay. They're, these are the keys. This is how ClickSense knows to take these particular structures. Think of these as different tables within those, um, within the nodes. 
Okay, so these are different tables. So we need to be able to link the data that is in these tables with the main structure. Okay, so the way we do that, the first one is key root. That's the top level root. We don't need that. But this one here, one, two, three, four, this is the sequence key that we set up, the auto generated sequence key. This column here links these columns in these structures or in these tables. So that's how it knows to link the results that come back in the main root to these, in these sub arrays or sub schemas or whatever you want to call them. I've heard a couple different names for them. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's move over here is I'm going to name this something very simple just to keep it concise with what I'm trying to do. I'm in the people resource and I want to be able to link this to that species table. So I'm just going to call it people spec link. And I'm going to copy that because I'm going to use that again. So in other words, I want to be able to link all of this information to what's in here. Now here's also something else to keep in mind. When we get the information from the species table, we need to be able to link on a key that's going to link the people to the species. So that's what this URL is here. So we're going to call this people key. Okay. So in essence, we basically are setting up keys between tables that kind of give us this structure that you see here. Okay. So we have our people spec link and we have our people key. Keeping in mind that people spec link is what's going to link this particular table results to this table species. So now we go to species and I just rename this the people spec link and this one I'm going to call species key or in this case spec key because this is how we're going to link. You can see in the URL it's got species in the name. This is how we're going to link this particular structure to the species table and you'll see that in a moment. Okay and that's all we need to do there. So we insert that script. I'm not even going to concern myself with what's being written here. I'm, I'm confident that the tool knows what it's doing. And now I'm going to select data from the species resource. Okay, same concept. Grab my results. I'm not interested in films. And then in my results, you see it's called name here. I'm just going to call this spec type. and we'll get classification. So these are the attributes of the species. I don't care about skin color, hair colors, eye colors, average lifespan, home world. I want language. I don't want the created or edited. This we don't need because we have that in the species link table. And then once again, it's got that key structure to link to these other nodes here. So we don't need the root one, but this one we do. Okay. Now, if you remember, I did the people spec link. This is the species people link. Okay, because this is the species response linking to the people node in here. So I'm just going to call this spec people link. Now I could use like primary key, foreign key, you know, FK, seek, but again, and trying to keep away from all that terminology because we're just really trying to link this structure with this structure here. Okay, so we got everything we need here. And always keep in mind that this is going to be the same. So you co I copy it because this is what I'm going to put in this structure. And now here, is where I paste that. And then if you remember, we had something called people key in the other table. That's how it's going to link the species data to the people data. And then we click insert script and we click load data. Okay. Our data has been loaded now just for fun. We'll go to the data model viewer and there is our table structure. We'll go back and we can start creating our app. So for fun, let's grab our KPI object. Our first measure is going to be a count of all the people and there's 87. And then let's get a count of all the species, which is spec type. And there's 37. Okay. So if you want to kind of type this people count and then spec count. All right. Now we can grab a couple of attributes. So here we got gender and hair color and language. 
and people name. And now, for example, if I'm interested in looking for, let's say, a droid, we have spec type droid. So there's five droids, and here are their names, BB-8, C-3PO, IG-8, R2-D2, R5-D4. If I'm interested in humans, I could also do a search for, um, where's my, oh, I don't have spec type here, so let's grab spec type too. Okay, so what I did is just drop that on top of this and it kind of like splits it so you can select it from the list to save space. So let's look for human. And now we have 35 humans. And here are all the humans. Okay, look for humans with blonde hair. And there's Luke Skywalker. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do within this video is I'm going to show you the media box, which was created by uh, one of our uh, resident clickies, Stefan Walther, uh, available on ClickBranch, which I'll provide in the URL. But basically, you have an extension that allows you to insert various types of web based media, web pages, videos, images, etc. And that's an extension. You can see the other videos I've created to work with extensions. Uh, basically, I just extracted it, put it into my extensions folder on ClickSense Desktop. But I have my media box. And you can see it takes different types. I'm going to choose website. And just to show you what I did is if I go to Bing Images, I just grab this URL. You can see for click. That's all it is. And I'll go here. I'll go to website, I'll go into the expression editor, I'll paste it. Now note, you need to include HTTP, so that's just going to be equal sign, HTTP, colon, slash, slash. And then right after the queue, I'm going to use a concatenation symbol. And I'm going to use a function called get field selections. Okay, and you can see the IntelliSense and autocomplete helps you fill that in. And I want to look for that person's name that I choose. So people name is the field, and I'm done. I click apply. We have now our Bing image search. Let's clear my selections and start over and say, okay, what does Admiral Akbar look like? And there he is. Okay, you can also do multiple. And you can see basically we're passing a comma separated value list with the get field selections count. Let's look at all the 62 male Star Wars characters. Who speaks Ewokies? Wicket does. Okay, it doesn't know that particular uh, name for that individual. Hey, that's search engine. That's not my problem. And there you go. You get the point at this point. Okay, so hopefully that was a little fun and entertaining for you. Um, also shows you some quite powerful options within the uh, REST connector. Okay, so that's about it. Um, I'd like to thank the developers of the Star Wars API website. I appreciate that. It came in very handy for what I need to demonstrate with ClickSense. So thank you very much to you and the team out there. And guys, you know where to find me on the Click community. Please leave your comments or questions. And don't forget, you can learn more in the video section on the Click community as well as the Click Help channel on YouTube. Thanks for your time, guys. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video.